Joining us now for more on this and other political developments, let's bring in our panel, GOP PAC chairman and GOP strategist David Avella and Democratic strategist and Fox News contributor Jessica Tarloff. Welcome to both of you. Okay. Hello. Thanks so much. What do you anticipate from this week's confirmation hearings, Jessica, and is Neera Tandon's nomination to be budget director dead now that West Virginia Senator Joe Manchin says he's a no on her? Well, I wouldn't say that it was dead, but it's definitely going to be a little bit more complicated than Democrats had hoped at the beginning of this. I remember we talked about this when Joe Biden put her name out there in the first place, and we thought, oh, potentially she could have been the sacrificial lamb in all of this, because he knew that Republicans would pretend that they cared about her tweets when they didn't care about President Trump's tweets for four or five years there. Um, so yet to be seen there. But I imagine we could pick up a Republican vote or two, and President Biden has said that he still thinks that she'll be able to get through. Merrick Garland's hearing, though, I'm really excited to see, because right before Mitch, well, right after Mitch McConnell said that he was not going to vote to convince President Trump, former President Trump, in the impeachment hearing, he did essentially signal to the Justice Department, hey, this is for you now. I don't think that we have the power to convict him, but you do. So it'll be interesting to see how many Republicans, especially those who voted to convict uh, former President Trump, kind of egg Merrick Garland on about that and want to talk about how he's going to treat the former president, as well as those who participated in the riots on uh, January 6th. David, what's your prediction for these upcoming hearings for some really critical cabinet spots? Uh, Tandon could be setting precedent here, Mike. Uh, only four times since 1970 has a majority Senate of the president not confirmed his nominees. President Clinton, President Bush the second and President Obama, all because uh, the nominees had tax issues. Tandon could be the first one that doesn't get confirmed because of her vitriolic messages that she would make on Twitter and other social media platforms as she went after U.S. senators, and now she's being held accountable. All mo even more interesting, though, is the fact that we haven't had a vote on the Secretary of Education, which arguably is one of the most important positions right now uh, as we face uh, not getting or trying to get schools open. Right. Uh, and I don't know if it's because uh, Cardona has expressed an interest in opening schools and Schumer's putting him on a back burner, but gosh, you would have thought he would have been in the first week of confirmations um, if they truly were trying to get schools open. All right, to the scandal in New York State, Governor Andrew Cuomo, there's been use of the I word impeachment. Jessica, is he in serious trouble? I do think that he's in serious trouble. I'm not sure if he's going to be impeached over this or, or how far it will go. But the fact that we do have an open investigation now that's been confirmed um, in New York State and that so many people in his own party who serve under him have come out and, and spoken out against him, going so far as to say that he's personally threatened them, um, like Ron Kim, an assembly member, uh, it's certainly not a good couple of weeks for the New York governor, and I wish that he would have months ago, but also even today it would go a long way to come out and to talk about what happened and to offer an apology. We are a forgiving country. People know that we had, frankly, no idea what COVID was going to do, how it was working, and people made mistakes. Like in New Jersey, Governor Phil Murphy did exactly the same thing, uh, but he didn't win an Emmy for it or write a book at the same time. And I think that Governor Cuomo kind of needs, needs to face the public on this one. Yeah, you have to show some humility. David, your thoughts? Uh, yet again, the cover-up is always worse than the crime, uh, often. Uh, and that is what we're seeing here. Uh, Governor Cuomo isn't going to get, even if he is pushed by the Democrats, he will ultimately still be their nominee, which gives a big opening for Republicans as we go into the 2022 election. Uh, for uh, us to potentially pick up the governorship of, of New York. Next weekend, we expect the return of former President Trump before a friendly uh, audience at CPAC. Jessica, your thoughts. I think it's going to be much of the same. It'll be interesting to see uh, how much he stays away, though, from talking about the big lie, obviously, that he lost, that he actually won the election, even though we know that he lost it. But he's clearly not trying to talk about Dominion or smart tech because he knows that he could be sued for that. So we noticed that when he called in to Fox News and went on Newsmax and won America News the day that Rush Limbaugh passed away. Um, I imagine it'll be much of the same, talking about his record and then also digging into that fissure that he's certainly trying to 
exploit between his side of the party and the establishment side of the party. He's already said that he'll go and campaign for, quote, MAGA candidates who are running against uh, sitting Republicans, which is sure to infuriate Mitch McConnell even further. David, I want to play a clip from former Arkansas Governor Mike Huckabee, and then I'll get you to respond. Well, I think the first thing that the president should say when he gets to the podium at CPAC is, y'all miss me yet? We miss pro-life policies. We miss pro-America policies. We miss the pushback against China rather than surrendering to them. We miss the independence of having an America that doesn't surrender to the Paris Climate Accords and uh, that actually pushes for a realignment of the Middle East. David, your thoughts on this appearance? As uh, Mike Huckabee said, Americans, 74 million of them, voted for the President Trump because of the agenda that he pursued. Uh, this also, the president going to CPAC, underscores the importance Florida is going to play in 2024 mm -hmm. for the Republican nomination. I mean, arguably, there'll be, there are four Republicans looking at it right now. Governor DeSantis, Senator Scott, Senator Rubio, and former President Trump now, all looking at, looking, making a bid in 2024. Uh, it's hard to see someone getting the nomination and it not going through Florida. And you, it's underscored by the fact that President Trump's going to CPAC. David, Jessica, thanks so much. Have a great Thank week. You.